Welcome to Mostly Lifting Stuff. I'm Garrett Bondi. What's going on? I'm Austin Gettner, and today we have Caitlin Smith. She is a, um, <laughs> there it was. Garrett said no arms, so we're going to start off strong with one arm. But health science major with a concentration in exercise science and a minor in nutrition, but she is now in her master's, working on her master's in exercise science. Four years of um, training background. She can do nine pull-ups in the neutral position. <laughs> this is hasn't been seen by anyone. It's so been don't, seen we don't know. It's, we don't know if it's true. I think it's on Instagram. It is, is it, it on, is Instagram? on Instagram? Okay, it's confirmed. Nine pull-ups. Uh, but she has a powerlifting type of style. But she likes to quote unquote mix it up. Kaylin, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. I just want to clarify too. Um, Rachel is the one that complains about the arms. Rachel did? Yeah, she said that I need to mind, be more mindful of them, so I just wanted to pass that on to you. She wasn't calling me out personally, though. No, she was calling me out personally, but I thought I should pass it on because it's... Oh, it's kind of... Because he couldn't handle it. You're kind of helping me out. Yeah. While helping yourself and everyone else. <laughs> Basically for the improvement of the entire podcast. So. Okay. I would like to apologize for all the past on. That's all right. We'll get over it. Kaylin, right. thank you for coming. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, how you got into lifting weights, and kind of how you got to where you are now. Okay, so um, back when I was in high school, I played three sports, so I was always busy. And then it was like when I got to college, I stopped doing everything, and I didn't go to the gym. And for that first semester, I really struggled with like anxiety and all of a sudden, the second semester, I just decided to pack gym clothes one day, and I was like, I'm going to the gym. And ever since then, it's kind of been how I deal with my anxiety or stress, and I really learned to love the gym, and it's become a part of my daily routine. So I know it's like a hard thing for a lot of people is to kind of go the first time. Like, did you have like a training background before that, like maybe in high school that you kind of relied on or was it kind of just, I know what it's kind of about and I want a piece of that, like I'm gonna start going. I would say I had a little bit with my sports. We lifted once in a while, but I definitely had a lot of learning to do. And when I look back and think, like I used to record my workouts, so I look back at the workouts that I had and I was like, I don't know why I did that workout. So, I mean, you definitely learn and you uh, talk to people and figure stuff out and get better as you go. Did you come into OU knowing that you want to do health science or exercise science? Or was that kind of something that sparked when you started going to the gym more? I did in the not. Semester? I came into OU as a biomedical major and then I went to nursing for one semester and after I got hooked on the gym, that is what really guided me towards health science because I had such a passion about it that I was like, I couldn't imagine doing anything else than sharing this passion with other people. Gotcha. So. How far did you get in nursing? Did you just do like the first pre Um I did, I think two semesters worth of pre -recs. So nice. they were wasted, but it's all good. I still graduated on time, so. Yeah, that's crazy. I guess a lot of that would transfer, though. Not as much as you would think. Because right. I had to, the anatomy and physiology combined, I had to take them separate. So that was a whole wasted class. The organic chem didn't have to take. But it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. I've moved on. I was just curious. <laughs> so you kind of describe your style as, like, powerlifting. Um, what... Like, what do you see as the benefits of that? And, like, do you see any kind of disadvantages? Like, I know that's, like, the style I kind of train, and I kind of have some mindset about it, but what do you think about it? Um, I mostly use it so that I can hit the main lifts, like squat, bench, and deadlift. So I try and hit at least one of those a workout, and that's kind of what I base my workout around. But I do like to do other accessory lifts, but it's still guided towards... Um, bettering the main lifts and I do help coach a high school powerlifting team when I get the chance so I'm kind of biased and I really enjoy the whole powerlifting getting stronger seeing your numbers go up type thing 
And I know that can be frustrating at times. We kind of, I feel like anybody who's done powerlifting for like an extended period of time at all has gone through phases where you feel like you're kind of stuck. Like, but I know you talked about like having a journal and like recording your workouts. It's kind of amazing to go back and like look at the old numbers you used to do and think, wow, like I might feel like I'm stuck now, but if you look a year ago, it's not even close. Definitely. Yeah, I can see that like my bench has improved a lot and it's crazy. Like when you kind of get down on yourself, like, oh, I haven't been improving, but it's like you think about how far you've come and it definitely helps you feel better about yourself. Yeah, I agree. I think that any time that you can have like recorded progress and know you know what you've done has actually contributed to you becoming better at a certain thing it's just so rewarding well i know for me like i didn't really think about um like numbers and recording and things like that until that last program we did that 10 week one where mm-hmm. you had to like input it and i told you like what to do mm-hmm. and then i actually like you say you like saw the numbers at the end go up and it kind of made me look back to think like oh when i first started you know i definitely was even close to where i was you know 10 weeks ago when I started mm-hmm. yeah so I guess I just never really had that mindset about um controlling like your numbers or uh recording them but I think it does make a big difference like you were saying like if you get to that plateau you can turn around and say well you know in the past x amount of months or weeks or whatever I actually did do something with my time yeah I give you a lot of credit for doing a powerlifting program Oh yeah, dude. not too often. <laughs> not too often, your six four, six five guys are. You're very mechanically disadvantaged. We'll put it that way. But we figured that out a little bit this morning too. I think. Yeah, we got we got Austin down to parallel on squat depth today. What? Yeah. And uh, isn't it a long way? It's terrible. Because <laughs> you were you were like close before, but I always kind of knew you weren't quite there. So today we did a light, like he did lighter set at the end. And I was like, hey, like, you know, try to keep your knees out over to- like over your toes and. Um, he did the first step I said alright a little bit lower and that like the rest of that set you got done you're like ooh this is gonna be rough <laughs> right. if I keep was, doing this yeah they, the legs have been sore all day let's just put it that way it's been a, it's been rough it's been a rough day <laughs> but um if I'm not mistaken didn't you meet your husband through a powerlifting, powerlifting meet, meet? Yeah. yes yep it was the Kraslik state meet and he was a friend of one of the previous lifters and he was a power lifter himself so they knew each other and he came as a judge and I was coaching slash judging and yep that's where we met and that was about two years ago so time off back up that was in Croswell Croswell Lexington yep Croswell yeah Croswell yeah wow throwing it back (laughs) amazing I'm pretty sure Tyler was a 500 pound deadlift guy in high school. He was. He was state champ, actually. Yeah. Where did Tyler go to high school? Northern. Port Huron Northern. Where'd you go again? Port Huron High. Oh wow. Crossing the rivalry. Wow. In the name of. In the name <laughs> I don't of, think that's allowed. Yeah. In the name of powerlifting and love, they crossed the rivalry. Amazing. <laughs> one of my best memories about the rivalry was, uh, I went to the one of their football games one year. I don't think you were there. I think it was with, like, Nathan. I did not go. And some other clowns. And that was, like, a wild game. It was just so stupid, but it was, it was a good time. <laughs> it was Anyways. fun. It was fun. Glad to see you guys can f- kind of find common ground in powerlifting. Yeah. I mean, I might be able to outlift him now. He hasn't lifted in a while, but... Well, those are fighting words. <laughs> those are fighting words. You, it's recorded now, so you have to do it. Yeah. Especially, Challenge accepted. Yeah. And she said she's going to do the deadlift competition in Oakland this year, <laughs> and... She, she said that uh, Kirsty, she is coming for your title. Kirsty, I did not say that. I said that I was <laughs> jealous of your shoulders. Garrett said that. <laughs> so you, I know you're a person to go to the gym like first thing in the morning. Yes. The worst uh, time. I once the best in a, time. Once in a while, I'll go early. Most of the time, the earliest I'll get there, I'll see you like leaving. <laughs> uh, why do you choose to go so early? Um, I think it's a great way to start the day off and if I don't get up and force myself to go to the gym then it kind of like hangs over me all day like okay when am I gonna go to the gym so if I just get up before my brain can even like process that I'm going to the gym and then I'm just there and I get it over with and you feel a lot more energized throughout the day I think and 
Yeah. This is like a 5.30 workout we're talking about. This isn't, right? Like 5.36-ish? Sometimes. Um, I would say anytime before 8. I'm normally there. Anytime before 8? Yeah. Okay. Some days I'm there earlier than others, but... Over Christmas break, I did go a little bit later. Just a disclaimer. I slept in a little bit, but normally I'm there early. When? And there's not as many people, so I don't have to fight for the machines or the squat racks. It was pretty nice today at like 8 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. I will say. There was no one there. Everyone went to class. Mm -hmm. But when did you find your partner? I know I don't know what her name is. Her name's Kylie. She's my Kylie. cousin. Okay. Um, she came to Oakland last year, so she's a sophomore this year. And she power lifted all the way through high school as well. Okay. And... I shouldn't say as well. I didn't power lift through high school. But she, so when she came, she wanted to work out, and I was already working out every day. So, and we lived together. So we were like, perfect, let's go to the gym together. Gotcha. So, okay. we have been, we don't live together now, obviously, but we still meet at the gym as much as we can and kind of hold each other accountable. So, okay. I was going to say, a lot of times, like, you work out with people, and I don't know, you get, you almost get, I feel like I get different things out of working out with different people. Mm -hmm. um, like, I'll work out with Rachel sometimes, and she'll be like, hey, like, you know, why, why are you doing it like this? And maybe it'll be, oh, you know, I'll have a good explanation. And sometimes it's like, yeah, that was probably pretty dumb. <laughs> like, I probably was going to kill myself in, like, a week if I kept doing it. But, um, and then, like, you know, y you know, I'll go with, like, Jordan or Austin, and... It's more like pushing, mm -hmm. like, like I know Austin's got you know two seventy five on the bar for squats. Like, all right, I gotta put another plate on. Like, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta keep it's pushing myself. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's not like I'm trying to be like, like an asshole about it, but it's like, all right, I gotta keep, yeah. I gotta keep moving ahead. Yeah. And uh, so is that kind of why you like you like having a partner, or is it accountability, or? I would say it's a little bit of everything. We both definitely kind of offset each other she's more of like a leg person so when we're squatting she's like put all the weights on the bar we can do more than that and I'm more <laughs> of like a bench upper body person so I'm like you can bench more than that or let's do curls because she wouldn't do curls ever if it was up to her so we offset each other in that way and it's nice to have somebody there to like joke around with and laugh with and I mean it's also nice sometimes to just be able to put your headphones in and work out but it's good to have somebody there to enjoy it with or talk about how you feel like your arms are going to fall off because they're so sore but so I would say it's a little bit of accountability and a little bit of being pushed and just having a friend there. Were you guys uh, like close before? We were, kind of, but definitely a lot closer when we lived together. She lived a half hour away from me when I was in high school and then lived an hour and a half away from me when I came to school. So we were, we've were we always kind of been like the same person and interested in the same thing, but we never really got to spend that much time together. But when we started living together, it was like, okay, <laughs> we're, we're best friends now. <laughs> so who's stronger? I would say she's stronger on squat and I'm stronger on bench, usually. What about deadlifts? That's the determiner? Uh, I don't uh, know. You don't she, know? Just no, tell the we've truth. never we've never maxed out on deadlift together. She did deadlift almost three hundred pounds. I think she got it close but didn't lock out at her powerlifting state meet. The most I've ever deadlifted is 285, so I guess I'm gonna give that one to her. And she's a lot smaller than I am, so Okay. She talking Wilkes, she might have you by a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Wilkes is like a standardization of oh. weights to body weight. Okay, so. fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Makes everything but fair. But like, yeah. like Austin, you know, I have height against me because I've got long ones. I'm like a grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> a grasshopper. I've never heard anyone self-describe as a grasshopper. I don't know. When I've I, never heard that. Whenever I squat and I out and like oh my gosh I look like a grasshopper so that's what I call myself a grasshopper. I didn't, I didn't think that today I'm not gonna lie that's not what crossed my mind I would um I'll probably talk to Matt and I'll see if he ever would use that as a cue when he's doing his powerlifting meets and see if he's gonna think all right you know brace 
All right, grasshopper. <laughs> then you explode up. Because <laughs> they do explode when they're jumping around, yeah, right? Exactly. That's true. Wow. That is true. Use it as motivation, everyone. Yeah. You are a grasshopper. You are a grasshopper. <laughs> yeah. So what are your numbers then? Like the most I've ever done or where I'm at right now? Mm, I guess all time. Uh, the most I've ever squatted is 235, but I think I had a little bit more in the tank. Most I've ever bench is 145, and then the most I've ever dealt up to is 285. Okay. Nice. I think you'd be Kirstie. I don't think so. Out. I don't know. Kirstie's on the squat program yeah, right now. Yeah, she's killing it. Uh, but she did say she hit a max of 230, which was her all-time best, so you got her by five pounds still. You better protect that lead. <laughs> oh. We're trying to create a little gym rivalry here. I'm uh, trying to just be friends, Kirsty. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Don't so, let her fool you. There can only be one gym queen. Yeah. I mean, it has to be one of you guys. So you have to fight for it. Yeah, that's true. Do you think you're going to compete again? Or you didn't compete in high school, but do you think you will ever compete? I don't know. One summer I spent training pretty hard thinking I was going to get into a competition, and then I didn't. And I kind of want to, but I also am kind of okay with just doing it for fun. But I would say that it, I guess it's a goal of mine to do it before I'm like 30. Yeah. I th- before I, my joints go in the toilet. I, I agree. I think I want to do one at some point. I will probably never think I'm ready, but I know. it's I don't just think one of those things you have to kind of throw yourself out there and, and see what happens. just do it. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't think, I and would I, never think I was like, oh, like, I am strong enough, like, right now, <laughs> let's go do it. Like, yeah. maybe yeah. right after deadlift max, but. Oh yeah, that's when you feel it. And I think that if you just like picked, like forced yourself to do it and signed up for it, and then you got ready for it, it's kind of like I'm just gonna do it, and whatever happens, happens. Right, and barring catastrophic injury or something, we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I feel like the way to go would be like to sign yourself up, and then be like, okay, I guess yeah. I get my butt in gear, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, because then like... it would force you to start training hard and taking it seriously. Yeah. Have you ever thought about getting like coaching, or is that against your religion because you're a major in this area? I'm not master against getting coaching. Area. She's a master. I'm not against getting coaching. I just haven't ever felt like I've been in a situation where it's necessary. Like if I were to be getting ready for a powerlifting meet, then I might reach out to somebody. I don't know who. It's kind of hard to put your trust in one person like that because there's so many like people out there that just do weird things but I don't know Tyler tries to coach me a little bit and I just tell him he's wrong <laughs> that's like what happens with me and Rachel They're like hey you should try this be like no, no. I'm not gonna do that I'm good <laughs> I've already done that it doesn't work <laughs> so you said you had a minor in nutrition mm-hmm. are you like big dieter or meal prepper I Definitely was. I've kind of fallen off the wagon. Well, I fell off the wagon, I'd say, like, the last six months of 2018, for sure. I definitely ate an excess of Christmas cookies. Um, But I plan on getting back on track. I think it's a lot easier when you have, like, a set schedule and you have to pack meals where it's like, okay, I pack what I'm going to eat. So if you don't pack junk food, then you don't eat junk food. I definitely think that nutrition plays a big role in a lot of things not only just working out but like how you feel how you get through the day and so I definitely eat healthy but I've been eating more sweets I'm not gonna lie six months that's uh <laughs> sounds like you started right around time yep, got, married. got married life changed <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Yikes. doesn't eat the greatest either, so, you know, he brings Oreos into the house, and when they're just sitting there, I hear him calling my name. I've got to eat them. Yeah. Kill them to the waist. Exactly. Yeah. I know. It's, me and Rachel literally talked about this yesterday. She was here, and she's it's like, you know, sometimes it's sad when I look in your cupboard and see, like, hardly anything in there, but then she's like, but I think... Well, that might be good one day when we're living together and, you know, he's not buying a bunch of junk food. Because, I mean, like you said about packing food, if you pack it, you're going to eat it. Mm-hmm. It's just like shopping. If you buy it, you're going to eat, eat it. it. Yeah. If you don't buy it. Exactly. So that's 
And that's something, like if it's not around the house, you're not going to just snack on it. And also having, like I, over the weekend, Sunday, sometimes like Monday morning before I have to go to class, make excess amounts of food so that I can take them for lunch or Tyler can take them for lunch. That way they're just ready and you don't have to like take the time to make it because sometimes you don't have the time. So you just put it in a bowl and take it and it's ready. Yeah, definitely ease of access and availability are like, Mm -hmm. I want food and I want it now. Right now. Exactly. So I'm not going to go to the grocery store and buy junk food because I don't have it and that's not fast. So Mm -hmm. yeah. So are you a sponsored athlete? I know you and Tyler are both big on the uh, AdvoCare products. Is I that... wish I was sponsored. If AdvoCare wants to sponsor me, they can, but no. I use their stuff all the time, though. You take, like, do they have pre-workout, or? Um, I use their Spark, which is, like, an amino acid and vitamin and mineral. Not vitamin. Or not mineral. I don't know. It's it's got caffeine it's, in it. Yeah. So it's kind of like an like a healthy energy drink, and it comes in all these flavors that are super tasty. And then they have a rehydrate, which is kind of like a Gatorade. So it's like electrolyte replacement, but healthier. So sometimes I mix them together. Sometimes I have them separate. Uh, they have a catalyst, which is also like an amino acid pill that I take a lot. But yes, I are love you one their of those stuff. people who? Uh has a code and they can get like 10% off but you don't get anything out of the deal are you an ambassador um, no an ambassador. my mom yeah. is a distributor so I get 40% off of everything but no I don't wow. have a code I wish I did the secrets come out <laughs> <laughs> wow so I know you have like this background in nutrition do they teach at all about supplementation I feel like that is such a big area of fitness and it is often like Rachel told me they have no no guidelines. lesson like you know they'll talk about a couple things oh, what they do okay. but they won't really go in depth about different types of supplements mm-hmm. and like what you should be looking for like um, no I definitely I had a class that I think was called like nutrition and supplements or something and they more went over like how the FDA does not regulate the supplements or how if there's complaints like it's after they have complaints that they take the product off the shelf but I never completely learned like in depth which supplements or which ingredients are the best to take for these purposes no I have not and I try and do research on it as much as I can but it's hard because there's lots of opinions out there from different people and that's basically what it is is opinions I mean you can find some research but that's what makes it so hard is that everyone's got their opinion and that's more of what it's based around I think the one thing that I did that I think other people could do and it really helped boost my knowledge about supplements and stuff like that is I actually made my own pre-workout for a while I did research into what ingredients and like how much of that ingredient Mm -hmm was like considered like a good dosage. And then you can go online and find like bulksupplements.com or something like that. And you can order them. And I mean, I was making it for like 40 cents a serving, which pre-workout's usually like around 70 cents or a dollar a serving. Yeah. Yeah. So it's cheaper and you're able to kind of have this transparency. I mean, as long as the site you're ordering them from is sending you the bulk stuff and it's clean. Then, mm-hmm. um, but you're able to have this transparency and you're able to know exactly what you're putting in and then you can kind of see how it affects you. And I think that helped me a lot. And now when I buy pre-workouts, I can look at a label and say, that's garbage, why would I buy that? That's $30 for you know, 25 servings of caffeine. Yeah. So what ingredients did you use? Uh, the main ones were beta alanine, mm-hmm. which people know for like the tingling feeling you get in like your face. I well, don't like that at all. Some people hate it. Mm-mm. It's kind of fun. No. I feel like I'm about to go on a trip or something. I'm going on a trip? Like LSD. <laughs> like it's Whoa. just not normal. Well, that's, I mean, beta in the role is it's supposed to help you with your muscle endurance. And then you have creatine, which is like, you know, a steroid to every mom, but every athlete knows that it's beneficial. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's so true. That is yeah. honestly the truest thing ever said on this show. 
My brother tried telling my mom one time that because I was taking creatine, my my kidneys were gonna fail or something like that, and it's just not true. Yeah, he has never. I mean, it was like this kid at school told him that, so it must be true. And my mom was, you know, head over heels for it. (laughs) I think I remember when you were telling your mom that you started taking creatine, and she was not about it. Yeah. Well, we kind of. I think we both kind of accidentally started taking it. Accidentally. Well, so we our freshman year, we were living in the dorms. Remember that six star protein we always got? Yeah. It was like stuff at Walmart. It was like eighteen bucks for two pounds of it, and we were like. This stuff is awesome. We're so drinking our protein because <laughs> I think I had like Tim Tebow, Russell Westbrook. Is this the one that you're talking about? Right? Yeah, it had all the athletes on it. Yeah. Like all these like jacked athletes. And we're like, oh my god, we are gonna look like these guys. <laughs> we are drinking this every day. And then I remember the one day I was looking at the nutrition label, and there was like 2.5 grams of creatine in it. I was like, huh, I've been taking this for a while. It's like nice. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, then mom saw because. You know, share the Amazon with her to split the cost, and yeah. she saw when I ordered that one kilogram bag of <laughs> creatine yeah. one time. She's like, "Oh, so you're taking creatine now?" I was like, "Yeah, I actually have been for a while. I didn't even know for <laughs> part of it." <laughs> but uh, creatine's another big one, and then um, l citrulline malate is supposed to help with like performance and like blood flow and stuff like that. Arginine's another one helps you get those nice pumps at the gym. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, then there's a few others that are, you know, a little bit less significant, but they help. Uh, carnitine is supposed to help your body more use fat as fuel. I'm not sure how that works. I don't know the research on that, but that's kind of what it's been suggested to do. Um, so I would just combine these things. I was like a little scientist. I had my little sheet. Mm-hmm. I had all my proportions measured out, and then I'd mm-hmm. say, all right, I want to make 20 servings, and I'd multiply it all through, and start scooping it into a jar or something to shake it and then that was my pre-workout so yeah so why do you stop making it yourself um well i I wanted to mix it up because pre-workout you at least i think you get like tolerant to what you're taking Mm -hmm. so it doesn't have the same effect and so over the summer i started i took nitroflex for a while because jordan was like raving about it and i was like yeah i'll give it a try (laughs) And I got it for really cheap, so I was like, yeah, anything's worth track, it's cheap. And then after that ended, we found this Performix pre-workout, which is like, like it's expensive. Like it's usually like sixty or seventy bucks for like a tub of it. Which is thirty servings. Or? Yeah, thirty-five. Okay. And we got it for like seventeen bucks, so it was like basically as cheap as I could make it, mm-hmm. and it was better than what I was making. So I was like, all right. We're going with this. So we've been running on that for a while, except for Vitamin Shop. I think ran out of it. I think we bought them out of the stock of it. So <laughs> we're going to have to find something else. But I don't know. We move around a little bit, take a few weeks off of taking it sometimes to kind of mm-hmm. bring our caffeine tolerance back down to earth and shoot it right back up. <laughs> That's the one thing nice about working out in the morning, though, is you have caffeine like in you for like the rest of the day. Because I don't drink coffee. So. I don't drink coffee. Disgusting. Do you drink coffee? No. Okay. I'd, I'd rather have like the energy drink. If I don't work out that day. I won't do both. Yeah. I'll don't do don't mix that. I'll, do, I'll just do one. One or the other. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do energy drinks so uh-huh. My stomach gets upset. Oh, so good. Which mm. is... I really feel like I'm being a hypocrite when I drink pre-workout and I say I can't drink I energy drinks. I don't do drinks. energy drinks either. Something with them just... Are you trying to bang? Doesn't sit with me. That's a pre-workout. Have you tried it though? No, but it. I was <laughs> like no. Sugar. I did. There's I, like nothing in it. it. I did. There's like two. It's like 300 milligrams of caffeine, which is a lot. Yeah. But there's like no sugar, like no calories, like none of that crap. Well, I definitely modeled. That's amazing. I modeled my pre workout after the Bang pre workout one time because that right. was like 55 or 60 bucks for a tub of it, and I was making you know 40 cents a serving for the same thing. Yeah. It. it was all the same ingredients just not the flavors so mm-hmm. throw a scoop of amino energy in there and you got some flavor and you're good to go you're ready to go you love it so do you drink like protein anything yes i normally try and have a protein shake the, most of the time after working out i don't always i would rather get my protein in food because i don't 
feel like I always need to supplement with a protein shake, but I do drink them, I'd say, three out of five days. Okay. Yeah, definitely a good way. It's just like, so if you look easy. at the macros, so if you look at the macros, it's easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's supplementing what you're doing. Keyword, keyword Yeah, keyword. That's why they're called supplements. They're not an end-all, be-all, like yeah. some mm-hmm. people think. Some people think when they start lifting that they should just go buy all these supplements. Well, I thought the six star was really going to get me to be a liquid like Tim Tebow, but that didn't happen. I know. I definitely thought it was going to work. You probably just didn't drink enough. Yeah, that's true. I should have had a tub a day. <laughs> also, shout out to Tim Tebow. He got engaged. Anyone else see that? No. Nope. I know who she is, though. She's Miss Universe. Miss Universe. Wow. Yeah. Tim Tebow. Impressive. He's going to be in the MLB soon, too. You think that. so? You're saying it here? The man is uh, an athlete. A beast, yeah. Yeah. So he's going to the NFL or NFL. MLB. I think he's got a chance. Because he's in like the top. He's in like. A, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the leagues are. AA league? Double A. Double A? Yeah. Yeah. He's somewhere in there. Wow. Well, he, he hey, couldn't, good he, luck to Tim Tebow. He definitely couldn't play modified softball, though. We know that. No. Mm-mm. Not the same. Me and Tyler. It takes a special kind of skill to play that kind of softball. Yeah. Me and uh, Tyler Smith, husband of our <laughs> guest here, play some softball together. So, yeah, super cool. They won their league last year. No big deal. No big deal. We're like the only team without like just pretty much like 80% old guys. So, it makes a difference. It's when a you can easier. actually run. <laughs> yeah. A little bit easier. Now, are you, do you take like a certain kind of protein? Like, I know some people are super into like taking like plant-based proteins or you just drink whey i just do whey most of the time i'm not a vegan so i'm not like worried about only doing plant-based so whey is normally cheaper so that's what i go for yeah that's that's me too i'm all about (laughs) i'm all about the deals yeah i uh, i have a a guy that i I get emails from (laughs) 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 this guy is i don't even know his name he's this crazy russian guy and he runs this website called fitnessdealnews.com. Mm-hmm. And literally every day he sends me like s- all these sales. And he has like, you know, a newsletter he sends out every day of all like the sales and stuff that he could find. And you just click on the links and he takes you to the store. And That's where you get Performix for How 17 How do I bucks. get hooked up with this Russian guy? Fitness Deal News. That's okay. it. It's right. awesome. Please endorse us. I just got, <laughs> yeah, I just got 10 pounds of Optimum Nutrition Whey for like 70 bucks. Wow. And that's usually like 55 a piece. Yeah. So shout out to my man, the Russian guy for hooking Where us up. Where do you out. store 10 pounds of protein? Oh, right there. It's on the shelf over there <laughs> behind, okay. behind our wall of fame. <laughs> so what is, do you have like an end goal with your training? something you ultimately want to do or is it just kind of like a consistent stress relief something that's like a kind of a constant uh just a constant i mean like i said i wouldn't mind making a goal to do a power lifting meet when i feel like i have the time to really put my best effort to it but i definitely want this to be more of a lifestyle and have my family be active and so it's not just like a, I'm in college, so I'm going to work out type of thing. Yeah. I thoroughly enjoy it, and I think it, like, defines who I am. <laughs> I mean, you made, like, a big career choice, pretty mm-hmm. much, based off of the fact. Yes, yes, I did. All right, I got to ask you a tough question, then. Uh-oh. So, because this goes through my head all the time, and I don't know how to think about it. So you say, like, you want it to be, like, a lifestyle choice, mm-hmm. and, like, you know, kind of like a long-term thing but you're doing powerlifting mm-hmm. and I love lifting heavy stuff as next as much as the next person but I know in the back of my mind like you're not always it ends it's up. not yeah it's yeah. not a long-term game and there's not necessarily uh you know green grass on the other side of it mm-hmm no, I definitely think there's going to come a point when I am not going to be trying to max out on squat all the time, but I think I'm going to try and push it as far as I can. I mean, maybe I'll be like this 70-year-old woman on the news that's like deadlifting 300 pounds. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, that is the hard thing with <laughs> that's the hard thing with anything like human 
you know, lifetime stuff. You can't see the effects right now on long term. Yeah, in the long term, yeah. We were just talking about this the other day. Rachel has to do a presentation on vaping. And mm-hmm. people are, you know, people always say, oh, it's not as bad as smoking, blah, blah, blah. It's like people used to think smoking was healthy. Yeah. And 30 years later, you see all these people dropping dead because of smoking. And they're like, oh, no, vaping so much better. It's fine. Like, people and don't have that. It's a water vapor. Yeah, yeah. and in 30 years, <laughs> they'll see a problem with vaping. Right. It's just, it just takes time to see all these things occur. Like and... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> It's so much better for you. It's basically like... Dude, or the Soren. They got the... After the jewel, they came out with the Soren. You seem Obviously pretty well-versed in this. Uh, Dude, I know... I was gonna say. I'm I know what it's all about, this. my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's got protein in there. Right? <laughs> that would be actually amazing. They start making a protein vape, then... Then you would hop on the boat? If there wasn't nicotine in it, I think that's kind of a big barrier for me, as I'm not trying to get okay, addicted to nicotine. No nicotine, water vapor-based protein that you had to like you had to vape it you doing it or no i still it still just looks so dumb people think they look cool doing it oh the big it boxes looks really, those things are kind of sweet i think looks, the boxes are obsolete now though i think they are i just seen the people blow those huge clouds i just think it just is like it's like a little flag going up in the air that says like i'm a loser just in like <laughs> big print wow that's all that's all i see and i feel bad saying that because i know people do it but you didn't know that i vaped hey I think it smells good. I'm not even gonna lie. Some of the flavors smell really good. Hey, I don't know. Not for me. Okay. Hey. Not for me. I have a strong opinion about it. It's not for me. <laughs> you do you. If you're, that's what you're into. What if your Russian guy sold vape on his website? It doesn't matter how good a deal that it would is. Actually, I'm not gonna. <laughs> that might double his profits. Vapedealnews.com. Yeah, hit me up and we'll get you some vape in there, bud. <laughs> so do you have any lasting advice you want to give the people listening? Any? Um, just kind of, like, powerlifting isn't for everybody. Different kinds of, there's so many different kinds of lifting or working out or exercising. So it's just kind of important to find what works for you, like, I tried running for a while and that definitely was not for me. So you want to find something that you enjoy and that you look forward to. I mean, it's not always going to be you wake up out of bed and you're so excited to go to the gym. You have to have some amount of dedication. But for the most part, you're going to want to enjoy what you're doing and have fun with it and just kind of find what that is for you and stick with it and let that be like your thing that you have for yourself well it's like a job you know you want to do something that you like mm-hmm. and enjoy yeah there's a lot of ways to do it mm-hmm. you gotta find one that matches your personality and what you're looking to get out of it and and that you can stick with for a long time you don't want to like find something it. that you're not gonna want to do in a month you're gonna want it to be continuously enjoyable and I mean even for powerlifting, like my goals kind of change or my ideas kind of change as I go, but I still am like making sure that I'm enjoying myself and doing what I want to do. And I think there's people, like you see people at the gym all the time that have been doing one thing consistently for a while and they are very good at it because they are not even just being strong or super like fit. Um, like look at Tim, you know Tim? Yeah. He's been doing... <laughs> I mean, Who he, doesn't know Tim? <laughs> I mean, I see him jump on the dip machine and do, like, upside-down push-ups. I'm like, wow. Like, he's been doing this for a while. Like, yeah. you can just tell the people that are committed to one thing, and there's a lot of different ways to be, like, active and, like, fit, I guess you could say. Um, and you just got to find what works for you. Agreed. Before we go, I think what really everyone is curious about is, since it's a new year, new you... Are the cookies going to stop or are they going to continue? The cookies have stopped as of right now. Temporary? I would say, like, overall, I would like to cut most of the sweets out, but I don't want to deprive myself, so I'm not going to not have a treat once in a while, but I definitely am not going to have as many cookies as I had at Christmas time. (laughs) That's that's really what I was curious about. And goals for this year? Um... 
make it through school. And what about like weight, like lifting goals and pull up uh, goals? Um. Well, we gotta hit ten soon. Well, that'll be soon. If you're at nine. Yeah, I'll hit ten. Um. I'd say like does 20. a video come with ten? Twenty. Twenty would be cool. Does a video come with ten? Yeah. There's okay. a video of nine. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I, and then at ten, it's a video, yeah. and then it's going. You're jumping to fifteen, and then okay, let's by say, December thirty first, it's twenty. Let's say fifteen by the end of the semester. Okay, that's fair. That can be my goal. Do you even watch your videos? I don't. I don't really go on Instagram anymore. Not gonna lie. That's kind of a good thing, though. Yeah. I, I spend a little too much time. Yeah, on me there. too. Yeah. I explore tab. That's also. You a get goal. lost in there. <laughs> <laughs> the explore tab. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you find yourself on somebody's page like three years deep and you're like, how did I get here? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's kind of creepy. I stayed at recent stuff. <laughs> Alright, well thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you to those that are listening.